It's very common lately that you hear many people going through eustachian tube dysfunction, but what you don't hear is people going through patulous eustachian tube dysfunction. Many of you are quite aware of the vast amount of symptoms that come with a dysfunction eustachian tube, but usually when the eustachian tube will not open, you will experience ear fullness, popping, cracking sounds, hearing loss, and even temporary tinnitus. But what's less common type of eustachian tube dysfunction is where the tubes are locked in the open position. This is called patulous eustachian tube, short for PET. PET is less common than eustachian tube dysfunction, but when you have this condition, it is quite terrible. The person often hears their own voices or echoes, and they definitely experience ear fullness. Now, you see, the two eustachian tubes are about 35 millimeters, or 1.3 inches long, and they run from the middle ear space. This is located on the other side of the eardrum that houses the three tiny ear bones in the back of the throat. Now, many people may not be aware, but adult eustachian tubes are very tiny, less than one-tenth of an inch, with a triangular lumen of only about two to three millimeters. For those of you that have just started feeling these conditions, let me break down the three main functions of the eustachian tubes. Number one, it is ventilation and air pressure regulation. That sound that you hear, when your eustachian tubes are blocked, you start to hear a muffled sound. Well, your eustachian tubes are not ventilating correctly. Number two, it prevents fluids from the nose and throat area from entering the middle ear. And number three, it provides drainage of the normal ear fluids. So this particularly is when you are congested or it's clogged, you start to feel pressure in your ear and even sometimes a little pain. Now the golden question that I receive quite a bit is what causes eustachian tube dysfunction? And I will say most of the time it's that you have a block or compromised eustachian tube that was caused by an upper respiratory infection or the common cold. Typically what happens is the lining of the eustachian tube is basically inflamed and it starts to narrow. This causes the nose to swell and get stuffy when you get a cold. But what happens is after the cold has subsided and you start to feel better, the eustachian tube dysfunction has not healed properly. To emphasize a little further, the complication of it all from a cold is post-nasal drainage, which can eventually turn into something called sinusitis. What happens at this point, the drainage will flow down to the back of the throat where the eustachian tubes exit. This causes a severe amount of inflammation and swelling. And once that happens, it begins the swirl effect where you start to think, what is really going on with my eustachian tubes? Are they ever going to heal? You feel better, but your eustachian tubes do not. And the other thing that could be causing your eustachian tube dysfunction is allergies. Now this is very obvious, but I will get to the point shortly. Allergies of course is something that cannot be completely healed right away. It can be something that goes over for many years and you're stuck dealing with the eustachian tube dysfunction as a symptom while you're dealing with allergy problems. Now to those that I speak to the most that do not have any allergy problems are those that are experiencing eustachian tube dysfunction without any prior conditions, no colds, no accidents, nothing that caused this problem. This is where we're targeting those individuals that are going through ETD and PET and have no reasons of why this is happening. All I can tell you to those who are dealing with this issue as I am who have not had any severe colds, no scuba diving accidents, no prior conditions and severity with allergies to really just start making some very swift and pivotal changes in your diet. I had to really lay it out and figure out what I am doing. If I'm smoking, I am stopping. If I'm going to drink soda, I am stopping. If I'm drinking coffee, I will also stop. You have to make some changes that you don't think will work because you'll be very surprised that they do. Now for me, caffeine was an enemy. Coffee specifically. It didn't do anything good for me. It dried me out. It made my alkalinity go down. It increased my acidity so my pH balance was off. For me, coffee was what I found to be the problematic cause of making this go as long as it did. So regardless if you're suffering from ETD or PET, please find that loophole. You have to really lay everything out. 
and as you all are aware I experienced red light therapy this really helped heal me and made me come back to the person I was before now to the few of you out there dealing with petulous eustachian tube dysfunction you really going to have to apply the same principles. It's going to have to be a complete workup of yourself. You're going to have to be your own physician and you're going to have to lay out exactly what it is that you're doing and figure out what your problem area is because mine was coffee and it helped when I got rid of that. So it's really going to have to identify that one thing that could be causing this issue or making it worse. For example, the obvious, if you smoke, if you have caffeine sensitivities like I did, if you have a problem with coffee beans like I do. Now let's remember folks, caffeine and coffee beans are two different types of caffeine. So you have to really identify in detail about these things. Now are you eating too much acidic foods? Are you not getting enough alkalinity in your diet? Are your pH balances off? Are you not sleeping enough? Are you not stretching enough? Do you have poor posture? These are all things that we really have to lay out and I am definitely going to take time for each and every one of you to find your target area to find you the health you've been looking for.